Hi guys. I want to read a comment and tell you what happened two nights ago to me. It was actually the first time that I thought, am I targeted? Well, that's not true. But targeted in a different way than a lot of targeted individuals you know, describe their targeting. Um, my my experiences with people have been very bizarre and I was listening to this targeted individual in London and she was talking about how they have different programs I took notes on it but they're somewhere or I don't know this was a while ago but I have a targeted individual playlist with a lot of videos and that woman is on it. And she was talking about how they di have different programs. So not everybody has the same experience. One of the things that she said was they will break down your confidence and they will put in your face everything that you hate. That's been my experience. Um, lying, never taking responsibility for, you know, things <clears throat> that one does. Another targeted individual I was talking to said that what she experienced was she would have a really good experience going to the dentist or to a store or whatever. But on the third time or fourth time, everything would change. And she'd end up getting kind of suffering con consequences of, you know, going back to the same individual that she had good experiences with. I didn't experience, I had so many experiences since I've been back in South Carolina where, you know, you find that mechanic finally and he's doing great work and he's charging less than everybody else. And then you go and suddenly you're experiencing more problems and it got to the point where you have to stop going to him I don't even want to go into the details, but my hair. You know, last year, it's not easy to be alone all the time and never hear, you know, you're aging, you're, you're beginning to, you know, get the wrinkles and all this and you're experiencing life in a whole different way. You know, you got kudos for certain things and now you don't get any anything. Um, and I was feeling horrible about myself. Now, I I never have any money, but I wanted to get my hair done. You know, I'm getting gray now, and I just thought, if you feel better, you know, you'll... Alright, so, I went to get my hair highlighted, and there's a black streak that was the reason why I went, wanted that out. And I went to a woman that had done a good job, you know, like the year before, and went to her even a year before that, did a good job. And when I went this time, that's all I wanted. Just the highlighting, get rid of that black streak that I can't stand, that drives me nuts. She then started telling me, now I had a, uh, this friend that I do have here that I see on occasion, and she gave me this coupon, you know, to get a haircut at one of those $15 joints. It was so friggin' hot here, and my hair is really thick, and I 
I took that coupon, I went in, I got my hair cut. I didn't even care what it looked like as long as it was a little bit shorter. So when I went to see that woman to get the highlighter, she kept saying, you know, you should get whatever she does to thin out the hair and everything. And I kept, you know, saying, no, no. And then finally, you know, you get almost to the point where, and I don't like being in this kind of vulnerable position where people will push something on me and I finally just cave. I caved. I said, fine. Which cost me more. And when I went home, I left, my hair was still wet. When I went home, I look in the mirror and the black streak is still there. Now, prior to this, I made an appointment. I show up for the appointment and she doesn't show up. And I left. And I get, you know, this call from her and she said, I'd, I've never done this before. I thought the appointment was for like, you know, 115. It was for 1115. And I was fine with that. I just said, you know, it happens. Don't worry about it. We made another appointment and that's when I went in. And so she talks me into getting the haircut. Okay. But the main point, get that black streak out. Go home. The black streak's there. I call her. I said, look, um, the black streak is still there, so, you know, I'd like to come in so you can, I didn't say do the job properly, but I said uh, it really does need to be, <laughs> you know, whatever the highlighting you do to get rid of it. She sounded annoyed. It was the first time that that time that she gave me, I sat for about 40 minutes waiting. Then when I got into the chair, um, I showed her, you know, and I said this was what, you know, needed to be highlighted or whatever people do. I never had to do anything to myself, you know, and so I don't even know the terminology or any of this, but she goes into the other room and I guess she's like mixing up colors or whatever. And, but she comes in with the colors and then asks me, you know, what color, look, it was the color that you had done before. So why are you like putting all of these different, you know, colors in my face? I was, I don't know this. She knows that I don't. You know, even when I went in, I said, you know, you, you have the color that you did before. She said, yes. So I didn't have to do any. Now I have to do this. And I'm like, um, just do what you did before. And that was a little strange to me. And then she goes back into the room, I guess mixing colors or whatever. And she comes back in and says, well, you did come in. The primary purpose was for the haircut, so how do you like that? And I said, that was not the primary purpose. I said the primary purpose was the black streak. I said the haircut's fine. From that point on, she became someone. The energy was mean. And look, I've not been in a good space. When you are so alone, you get a little bit frightened when people get attitude towards you. And I couldn't believe how I was treated. I, I couldn't even speak. So she does, you know, the coloring, the foil. I'm sitting there. Then she comes in and starts, you know, ripping it off. And she, I couldn't believe how it's like, okay, you you didn't do what I asked you to do. I paid you money for it, so could you please do it now? No problem. People make mistakes and whatever. 
but instead, because you can't cop to one little mistake, you start treating me like shit. Like, I'm the problem. This is what people do. I couldn't believe it. And when I finally got out of there, I felt so small. And it took, no joke, about a week. Now, if I still had that life and I still, you know, had to struggle, I would have said, you know, to hell with you, I'm not coming back. I, I say, don't go to this woman. And I would have felt fine. But life changed for me. And for a week, I had to work on just picking myself up from what this woman did to me. Now, this woman also knows another woman who goes to see her. And I know that they would gossip about it. So, I thought it interesting that here I am talking to this targeted individual and she says three, four times and boom. You know, whatever it is that you want, it's going to crash. Everything's going to... And I thought, wow, okay. So I just talked about two experiences, but that kind of stuff actually did happen to me. Now, someone is writing here a comment, talking frequencies. I've been so sick and physically paralyzed for the last two days. I do have RA, but my pain is not normal. I've had tinnitus since 2008, nonstop. The frequencies change daily, and at times the change is so violent, I feel like I'm going to pass out. It's actually made me puke. My husband also hears the frequencies, uh, not, in his, not in his head, above his head. And hers come from inside what feels like her brain. She says, I am a targeted individual. Anyone else feeling rough? <laughs> I think a lot of people are feeling rough. What happened to me two nights ago? I finally fell asleep. I woke up in excruciating pain underneath my right rib cage, and I felt nauseous. It was excruciating. I was like, oh, okay. Now I've experienced excruciating pain, and I've known that it's a microwave. Was I targeted? No. There's an intersection in Anderson, South Carolina emergency services on one corner with their huge antenna, a hospital on the other corner with antennas all over their roof. That section, I've experienced vertigo twice driving, had to pull over, and I've experienced twice getting hit with a microwave. I knew it. It was instant, excruciating pain in my abdomen, but it left within a few minutes. The sudden onset, the sudden disappearance. I knew it was a microwave. Well, what's going on here that I'm experiencing this excruciating pain right under my rib cage on the right? Okay, I finally fell asleep again and woke up again. Left rib cage. The pain, I couldn't believe it. I was nauseous. I couldn't walk. My balance was off. The pain was so intense and it lasted a lot longer. And my body was burning up. And you know, a lot of what they talk about with the active denial, people want to rip their clothes off because their bodies are burning up. I couldn't get my clothes off fast enough. And I've not felt the same since. Now the pain has gone away. It was not the same experience. It was far worse, far intense, more symptoms, and I felt so unbelievably sick. I literally couldn't do a friggin' thing. And that began to lessen a bit but all day long, walking was, 
I can't really describe what it was that I was experiencing with my legs, with my my limbs, but the balance was just off. It took a full like 24 hours. It felt like once the excruciating pain lessened, it felt like somebody had stomped on my ribs. All day they were sore. And I don't have anything wrong with me. But the body just burning up instantly. Um, it was the first time. I thought, holy shit, <laughs> could I be targeted? I don't know. I don't know. And I can't say anything definitively unless I have real evidence. And I may never get the evidence, but um, a whole lot is going on that I don't understand in life. and. It's rather strange. So I just have to say to those targeted individuals that are experiencing these episodes of excruciating pain, God, my heart goes out to you. Because you know what? After that, that second one, when I was experiencing it, I thought, I, I can't do this again. That's how bad it was. Um, and it was like I needed something cold. I actually opened up the refrigerator just to get some cold air on me. Um, this is really happening to people. And you know what? They too, you know. Anything outside that bell curve ordinary experience, people just don't believe. I am so sick of people. Man. The targeting, I certainly understand the gang stalking. My family gang stalked me. So I get it. And it's a horrible way to live. And when you have no recourse to to resolve, you know, or to get your life back or you can't abate any of it. This is what your life is. I have a lot of subscribers who are living this. And it is an evil that is so. Well, I've said it before. They stop at nothing. They have no limits. They have no conscience. They have no guilt. They have no feelings. Like ordinary people. They're not ordinary people. There's something so twisted that makes them subhuman. Doesn't matter how much money they have, doesn't matter how uh, you know they live in these fancy homes and, and uh, wear these designer clothing, it does not matter how polished they look. They are subhuman. And I am just so sorry for everyone. Like you know, you who left this comment. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I've been feeling rather rough. And I bet an awful lot of you have. Leave a comment. Please. How are you feeling? You don't have to be a targeted individual. Sensitive to the frequencies? How are things going? I will tell you, my symptoms are really getting bad. My vision is just deteriorating. My balance off a lot. Dizzy a lot. Oh, the um, headache or the migraine without the headache. You know, the jagged lights at the periphery of my vision. Um, exhaustion, still not sleeping. All of this has a detrimental effect on basic functioning. How are you guys functioning? 
I hear now, the buzzing, it's like, it's a screeching buzzing right now. I go to National Mosaic, I see these ultra-low frequencies being set off last night, Greer, South Carolina, coming right into Anderson, intense. And this just goes on and on and on. And it's remarkable. And I have to say, you guys, I have a tremendous amount of respect for. What I experienced two nights ago, from what I've heard from subscribers who are targeted individuals who experience the excruciating pain because they're hit with microwaves, and you go on. My hat is off to you. Clearly, you have an awful lot of strength. Because having to endure that, if I have to endure that again, I am not kidding. I'm not sure I can. That's how painful it was. So think about 5G, guys. Think about that active denial system that is being set up for all of us. The imprisonment, the invisible frequency fence keeping you hostage, you know, captive. You do something wrong, they may keep you imprisoned in your home because these 5G cells are going to be everywhere. They can literally lock you in your home. They can create a barrier, invisible barrier, with the 5G millimeter wave and completely seal off neighborhoods. Anybody who tries to go through that, woof, you're going to feel excruciating pain and your body burning up. Neighborhoods that are affluent, nobody will be able to enter. Try to get out of your mega region, it ain't gonna happen. So, anyway, yeah, leave comments, let me know how you're doing. I'd like to hear. And if you're not doing well, man, <laughs> you know, what does it mean to say you're not alone? Does that help you feel better? No. But sometimes just knowing that other people are hanging on, just getting through the day. I, it, it works for me sometimes to think, okay, I keep in mind subscribers who are going through. Their life now so changed. And it has become day in, day out suffering. And they get through. So I'll think about them. I get through. Thanks for listening. Ciao, guys.